There's a question posed by Fidif Kamfruktis on the YouTube. Dr. Zakir Naik, if the Bible is corrupted, how come can still find Muhammad in the Bible, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How come only those few chapters not corrupted? The question posed by the brother is that if Bible is corrupted, how come the prophecies of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Bible are correct? So do you mean to say only those few chapters are correct? No. Corrupted means, corruption means there is some mistakes in the Bible. There is some addition, there is some concoction, there is the interpolation. That does not mean 100% is wrong. Corruption means the Bible has been interpolated. The, there has something addition been done. So whether the addition corruption can be 10%, can be 20%, can be 30%, depending upon the percentage of corruption, the remaining remains quite. So as far as the Muslims are concerned, we consider the Quran to be a furqan, the criteria to judge right from wrong. So if whatever is mentioned in the Bible, it matches with the Quran or matches with the Islamic Sharia or the Sahih Hadith, we say we have no problem in accepting this portion of the Bible as to be the word of God. Those portion in the Bible which go against the Quran or against the information which is mentioned in the Sahih Hadith, we say that this portion is surely wrong. We do not agree this can be the word of God, this is, this is an interpolation, this is a fabrication, this is a corruption. Now third, there may be certain portions in the Bible which may not go against the Quran or the Sahih Hadith, may not agree with the Quran or Sahih Hadith. So this goes in the ambiguous slot, may be right, may be wrong. So the present Bible that we have can be divided into three parts. Those parts which match the Quran, we say we have no problem it, in considering this to be the word of God. It may not be the word of God also, but if we have no problem because it matches with the Quran, or it may be the word of God because it matches with the Quran. If it is against the Quran and say Hadith, as Allah says, I have revealed the Quran, I shall guard it from corruption. We know that the Quran is 100% the word of God. So if something in the Bible which, which goes against the Quran, we can say for sure this is not part of the original Bible or the original word of God. If something neither agrees with the Quran or disagrees with the Quran, we put it in the ambiguous lot. Maybe that, may be wrong. So those portions in the Bible which talk about Tawheed, we say we have no problem in accepting this portion as the word of God. Those parts which talk about the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Deuteronomy chapter number 18, verse number 18. Gospel of John chapter 14, verse number 16. And all these. We have no problem in accepting word, the word of God. Those portions of the Bible which say the alcohol is prohibited in matches the Quran, we have no problem in accepting it to be the word of God. Those portions of the Bible which say that that the eating the flesh of son is prohibited. Book of Life Takers, chapter number 17, verse number 15. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. We have no problem in accepting this portion to be the word of God. So like that, I've given the talk on similarities between Islam and Christianity. So all the portion in the Bible which matches with the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, we as Muslims have got no objection in accepting it to be the word of God. It can be possible that some of the things which are mentioned in the Quran may also be an interpolation in the Bible, no problem. So what we say, we don't mind accepting it as the word of God based on our Furqan, the Quran. But surely those portions which go against the Quran and against the Hadith, we say this is not part, we don't agree with it. And which is ambiguous, may be right, may be wrong. So this is how we approach when we read the scriptures of the other religions. That if it matches with the Furqan, the criteria of the Quran, we have no problem in accepting it the word of God. If it goes against, we reject it. If it's ambiguous, neither saying yes, neither saying no, neither matching with the Quran, neither speaking against the Quran, it's ambiguous, maybe that may be wrong. Hope that answers the question. <laughs>